I'm Julia Coakley, Director of Operations, and on behalf of the MGAA, I'd like to welcome you to our briefing this afternoon, which is being delivered by Amtrust International. Before handing over to our presenter today, I'd like to run through a few housekeeping points. Please ensure your microphone and your camera is off, and if you'd like to ask a question, please use the chat button at the bottom of your screen, where your, answer, your questions will be answered post-presentation. If we don't get a chance to answer your questions during this time, Bruce, our presenter, will be happy to answer your questions post-event. This presentation is accredited for CPD points, if relevant to your ongoing professional development programme, and the recording will be available on our YouTube channel and on the MGAA website. You will be sent a feedback survey post-event, which I do urge you to take the time to complete as your feedback on these briefings is incredi incredibly important to the association. So today's market briefing is being delivered by Antrust International, and I'd like to introduce Bruce Whitney, Chief Underwriting Officer. Bruce joined Antrust International in 2019 and has 30 years industry experience working in various senior management roles across the globe. Bruce joined, I beg your pardon, Bruce started his career with Domestic and General before moving to AIG, where he worked for 14 years in Eastern Europe, Australasia and EMEA regions. Bruce joined ANV in 2015 as active underwriter for the Lloyd Syndicate 5820 Jubilee, specialising in consumer products, trade credit and political risk. ANV was acquired by Amtrust in November 2016. Prior to taking up his current CEO role, Bruce headed up the underwriting team for Amtrust Specialty Risk in the US. So Bruce, if I might hand over to you. Yeah, thanks, Julia. Um, lovely to meet everyone, albeit remotely. I'm um, sorry we couldn't do this face-to-face. Uh, -face. It always, always feels a little bit impersonal <laughs> doing through these kind of um, virtual rooms, but um, with the tube strikes and issues with room sizes, etc. Um, you know, it's the, probably the best way of getting out to as many people as possible. <laughs> Very much open door policy. Love to meet meet you face to face. We'll be attending various um, of the MGAA functions uh, across the year. So, uh, so definitely an opportunity to do that. Julia's asked me uh, as part of the housekeeping just to touch on the learning objectives. So there's two for this. Um, she said it qualifies for CPD. So the first one is understanding who we are, what our capabilities are, um, opportunities to work together, uh, and sort of broadly setting out our risk appetites. And, and the second one is uh, knowing knowing me, getting to know me, and uh, some other members of the team. You'll see um, various faces from Amtrust uh, on your screens, and they'll be participating um, from time to time during the during the presentation. Um, they represent most of the key lines that we that we write. So there'll be predominantly underwriters. I think I, I snuck a conduct person in there as well, just to just to cover off any consumer duty questions that you might throw in my direction. So um, great to be presenting to you. Um, you've had the, the the who am I from Julia, so I won't uh, won't dwell too too long on that. But I would say it's a great time to be for us to be presenting to you. Uh, this little logo at the top of the screen um, says that we're, we're we're 25 years old this year. Um, so there's been lots of sort of Amtrust activity uh, and a big push on um, getting our our name out in the market. As as an organisation, we've we've tended to sort of fly a little bit under the radar. Uh, we're a very large organisation. Not many people know who we are, uh, and over the last sort of 12 to 24 months, we, we've, we've really made an effort to try and kind of get out into the wider uh, wider market and let people know who we are and what we do uh, and, um, you know, what we're all about. Um, uh, growth is key to us this year. Uh, MGAs are, are absolutely in our in our kind of um, in our sweet spot, in, in the, 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 the key distribution channel for us. Uh, and we're absolutely uh, interested in, in looking at uh, increasing the number of uh, MGA relationships that we have. Uh, we joined the MGAA back in um, sometime mid to, mid to late last year, uh, you know, very much as a, as a part of this push to uh, get our presence better known in the market. 
So three sections to this presentation. One is the overview on AmTrust. Uh, then I'll run through and introduce you to some of the, 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 um, the, 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 the lead underwriters for the different uh, lines of business that we write. Uh, and the third one is kind of looking at why, why to work with us and, and, and what we look for in a, in a, in a relationship with our, with our MGAs. Uh, so uh, we're a US dem domiciled organization, as I say, 25 years old um, this year. We write in excess of $8 billion uh, of GWP uh, to a 95% uh, combined ratio. Uh, we have $25 billion in uh, total assets, and we're AM best rated to, uh, to A minus. Um, 6,000 employees across the world. Uh, you know, 25 years ago, we, we really started as a, as a warranty company. Uh, and, uh, and and warranty is is one of the core lines we'll talk about today, uh, but it's it's absolutely in our in our kind of DNA. Um, and we write in the US, we're writing about a billion and a half dollars of of warranty business in North America, uh, and we have an even larger book of um, of workers comp and uh, and what we call programs business, which is. Is a kind of schemes business for 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 SME, including property and cyber and uh, and various other um, various other product areas. Um, SME is very much in our in our kind of uh, in our uh, line of sight. Um, it's it's certainly the, the the sector that we like to 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 operate in um, uh, predominantly. And, and we like, you know, very niche type business. We like, we like those kind of um, slightly unusual niches that, uh, that that some of the larger composite insurers tend to uh, tend to avoid. So that's our that's our global uh, entity. Uh, within that, we, we split our business between uh, kind of domestic North American and international. So international in this case is everything outside of uh, North America. And there we're just over a billion dollar business, um, uh, writing to a very strong 88% combined. 75% um, plus of our business is delegated. So open market business is, we have a very small sort of traditional open market business through PI in, and legal expenses in the UK. Um, but most of our, uh, our non-delegated is going to be reinsurance deals across the rest of the world. Um, so, from a UK perspective, the vast majority of what we do is is delegated. It's it, it's it's the way we operate. We delegate underwriting. We delegate claims, um, and uh, you know, with a few exceptions, we 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 do our own claims handling for property in house at the moment. Um, but but you know, delegation is the way we the, the way we operate. Uh, it's we tend not to. Hand, uh, hand across the pen. Um, so dele underwriting delegation will tend to be on a, on a limited basis using, you know, predetermined rates, um, uh, you know, raters in the, uh, built into the, uh, the, the, the platforms. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, delegation, absolutely what we want to do. Within the, within international, we have three insurance entities. Um, we have one in, based in Dublin, which covers Europe. We have one in Italy, in Milan, which, uh, which covers our Italian business, and I'll come on to that in a sec. Uh, and then um, I, I work out of our London office um, for, for UK and everything outside of Europe, so rest of world. Um, and rest of world for us is, is you know, fairly extensive, probably with the exception of, of the African continent. Um, so we have, uh, we have significant operations in, uh, in the Far East with an office in China, um, uh, Shanghai, and an office in, in Seoul in, in South Korea, um, uh, Middle East, uh, India, Israel, you know, the rest of uh, the, the rest of the Asian continent. Uh, and we write a lot of business in Canada and Australia as well. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll come on to that as we as we go through each uh, each line of business. Um, as I said, generally don't write write direct. Um, uh, 
uh, delegation is the way we we, we tend to, to structure ourselves. Um, uh, and we're a multinational company, so operating in uh, in 16 countries. We write in many more, but we have we have operations in in around 16 countries. So that's Amtrust as a as an organisation. Um, within our international business, which I I'm representing today, uh, we write effectively six uh, core lines of business. Uh, and I'll I'll go through each of those uh, individually, uh, and as I say, introduce um, introduce the individual underwriters. Um, we we were a much had a much wider product range uh, in the past. Um, we you'll some of you may remember that we owned various Lloyd syndicates, um, which we uh, divested to uh, to Canopius um, a few years ago. Uh, but it was really a focus on uh, taking our product uh, range down and focusing very much on those kind of product niches that we that we know and love. And the first of which is uh, our warranty business. And um, hopefully I have Rob Sadler on the phone. I can't see anyone, by the way. I can only see my presentation because, I, because of the way I've set up my screen. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to introduce Rob in a second. Um, as I said at the beginning, warranty is absolutely in our in our kind of uh, in our DNA. Um, we're one of the largest warranty providers in in the UK and across Europe. Uh, we're, we're one of a small number of warranty providers that that can offer all of the product range from uh, warranties for you know mobile phones and electro electronics through to vehicles and you know plant and equipment, uh, credit card programs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Rob Sadler heads it up. Rob and I worked together at ANV. Rob, prior to that, was at um, was at was at Chubb uh, and Alliance before that. And hopefully, Rob, you're on the phone. I am. Yes. Hello. Do you want to talk a little bit about the geographies where you're currently focused? Yeah, we'll do. Um, so, as you say, we have that international focus. Everything outside of North America. That means writing directly in the UK and Europe, and it means reinsuring internationally um, in places like China and Korea, as you mentioned, where we have offices, but also India and Southeast Asia and uh, quite, a, a, quite a wide reach in Southeast Asia, um, not Russia anymore, not Iran, but anywhere where there's a large uh, geography and a, and a large GDP and a large uh, economy. Um, but because I'll just say as well, because it's part of our core business, Amtrust have a huge amount of specialist knowledge uh, in relation to this uh, consumer affinity business, whether that's motor or uh, electrical device or home emergency. And so it's our mission to use that knowledge and experience uh, to create sustainable, successful programs which work for all of our um, stakeholders. So that's the end customer, it's distributors, it's administrators, it's brokers, it's other insurers that we might be reinsuring. Um, and practically, um, that means investing time to understand all the details of the business and using data to measure actual performance to expectations. So it doesn't matter where we're operating, whether it's directly, whether it's reinsuring, whether it's in Asia or Europe, we'll always want to understand uh, and play a big part in, in adding value. Perfect, thanks Rob. Um, I'm going to I'm going to keep moving through this rather than asking for the questions at each stage, but uh, we'll have a Q and A at the end. I think Julia, that's probably the best way of doing this. Yeah, that's it, Bruce. Thanks. Excellent. Okay, second line, uh, second um, core line of business for international is is Med MedMal. Um, you know, it's one. It, I'm not going to dwell on this because it's a a business that we write in Italy for Italy. Predominantly, um, we have written it in other European countries in the past. It's one of those, you know, typical example of, of, of niche businesses that we like to become uh, uh, a little bit of feedback. I don't know if everyone can go on mute. Julia, can you? Uh... Ah, okay, great. Sounds better. Thanks, Bruce. Um, yeah, so uh, so I'm not going to dwell on this. It's it's an Italian business rather than a UK 
uh, but it's a good example of the sort of niche area, very highly specialist. Um, and, and one of those, uh, one of, a good example of a business area where we, we like that kind of counter cyclical, everyone's getting out the door, everyone doesn't like it, we like it, we get in there, we take relatively dominant position in a particular market and, um, and create barriers to entry for, for other insurers really through, through that kind of being, being incredibly specialist in a, in a, in a niche area. Um, the third one is property insurance. Now, property we've been writing since, oh gosh, I think 1998 um, through IGI, a company that we acquired. Um, we, have, uh, we have Andy Camber on the line. Andy joined us relatively recently from Brit. And I'll, I'll let Andy jump in in a second to, to introduce himself and Hannah Connolly. So a Andy is the lead underwriter for property um, across all the different products that we offer. Um, Hannah heads up the, uh, the team in Nottingham that look after our uh, consumer lines business. And um, again, we're, in, we're, not, we're not a big household player, not a big home insurance player in this market. Um, but we, we, like, we like our niches and, and we take a very strong position in those and we kind of know what we like and we set, our, our, set out our appetite uh, you know, very, very strongly. Andy, can I hand over to you? Sure, yeah, thanks Bruce. Yeah, um, yeah hello everybody. Um, and thanks for the opportunity for us to uh, present to everybody today. Um, as Bruce said, yeah, I joined uh, beginning of November last year after a reasonable stint in the Lloyds market. Um, and I, a couple of things I really wanted to bring out was just uh, Amtrust, um, I think a lot of insurers always say that they really empower their underwriters uh, to make decisions, etc. And one thing that I found at Amtrust is that they absolutely do that. Um, if we want to write some business, we can go ahead and write it. We don't have uh, what I've been used to in the past of having um, you know, lots and lots of meetings and um, committees to run things through, etc. We have a lot of governance still, as as you would expect. But the underwriters, if they want to write some business, they can do that. Um, second point really was we're we're very much on a property side, uh, very much in growth mode, uh, very focused on uh, the sort of last last three on the list there. From that perspective, um, essentially commercial business, um, commercial property. Um, but we have long established uh, capabilities in the, the residential let uh, and the caravan uh, market. So we've got some uh, brilliant uh, analytical capability as well, uh, which we you know work with our partners with. Um, Hannah Connolly, as, uh, as Bruce mentioned earlier, is also on the call, uh, heads all of that up. Um, and it's, uh, it's a real core part of our, of our property business. Um, so yeah, Hannah, are you, th are you there? Are you able to? Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm here. So yeah, we've got the, on the consumer side, the residential let, caravan, holiday home, and an occupied business. And um, really what we're looking for is longevity with our partners. You know, we want a partnership with people. We don't want to write a binder for a year. We want to have those long established relationships, which we feel is kind of where we're, where we're at. Yeah, Perfect. thanks. Thanks, Hannah. Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, moving on, legal expenses. Our legal expense business really divides into to two parts. Um, after the event, ATE is business that we write in UK, uh, Canada, and Australia. We've got a growing book in Australia. Um, uh, we've been in it for, for many years. Uh, it's headed up by uh, Simon War. Simon just literally this morning flew back from Australia. So uh, I, 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 I let him off uh, this call so he can, he can see his family and get to bed. Um, but, uh, you know, he drives that book very much, uh, particularly the, the after, after the event. Um, and, and that's covering um, adverse cost insurance um, for litigation cases that are brought by group actions, uh, individuals, companies, et cetera, et cetera. Incredibly specialist. Uh, we're absolutely, you know, one of the, one of the lead, um, lead players in this market. We know it, we understand it. And, uh, and we want to do more of it. And we want to do more of it in the UK. Uh, we want to work with MGAs. 
and and we want to do more in Europe. I know most of who I'm talking to, the audience today, is is probably more UK focused, but but certainly um, in our in our in our line of line of sight to get uh, to expand our our geographical spread on that product. Uh, and the other side of our business, um, and it's pretty pretty much 50-50, the other side of our business is the before the event um, that's headed up by uh, by Mark Wilson. Uh, Mark hopefully is on the call as well, and I'll hand over to him in a second. Um, no, I'll hand over now. Mark, over to you. Bruce, I can't see a Mark Wilson in the attendees list. No, okay. sorry. <laughs> All right, no problem. So BTE, this is uh, predominantly uh, legal protection cover sold as an add-on um, alongside motor policies, uh, house, uh, home insurance policies, etc. Bruce, sorry, I'm here. I am here. Oh, you're there. Great. Yeah, I am here. Sorry. Um, afternoon, everyone. Yeah, as Bruce said, I head up the BTE side of the business. So the, what everyone would deem to be the standard legal expenses that is offered either as an add-on or as an um, added value part of a primary policy. Um, we're very strong in the consumer aspect uh, on commercial and on group. Uh, and then we've uh, been around this market for a long time. So we've got the ability to write very niche, bespoke opportunities as they arise. Um, but as you'll hear from the other underwriters, we all work on a very similar basis where we're looking to establish long-standing relationships and work with all the parties for uh, mutual benefit. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Uh, next one is uh, PI. So, um, so <laughs> warranty, legal expenses and PI are our, our three lead areas, really. Um, we write about £150 million of of PI, uh, it's headed up by um, uh, Steve Moore, um, who's ex RSA, and Dean Kin, and also ex RSA. Uh, Steve's at a funeral today, so wasn't able to attend. Dean hopefully is on the call, um, and uh, again, highly specialised. We know we know the niches we like, um, and Dean will take you through what they are. Again, I can't see a Dean unless he's dialed in with some other okay. tag, sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. So, as I say, we, we're in some very specific professions in the PI space, um, predominantly IFAs, um, uh, solicitors, um, design and construction generally, uh, with a particular focus on, on consulting engineers, architects, uh, etc. Um, uh, you know, so, solicitors is a is a uh, an interesting area for us. Uh, again, it's an example of kind of where the market's uh, pulling away from. Um, uh, you know, having to follow for those uh, those who know the PI market, um, following the uh, solicitors regulatory authority. Uh, minimum terms and conditions and some of the stipulations they put around uh, the product and the way um, uh, the way the product b b performs when companies go into into, into liquidation etc uh, causes problems for us um, but it's uh, but it's an area that we uh, we're in and um, uh, you know looking to looking to to find ways of um, operating in that space to the uh, you know, to the um, the benefit of the client and, and ourselves, and it's a tricky one, but um, uh, definitely one that we that, that we're interested in and interested in talking to companies about. My apologies, Bruce. My computer okay. dropped out just in the just <laughs> okay. as you started explaining what was going on with PI. Um, sincere apologies there. Um, okay. Just to echo what Bruce has said, really, um, we are rather counter cyclical when it comes to professional indemnity. We're there when many others are dropping out um, IFAs design and construct surveyors great examples of that um, where we're actively writing that sort of business I think the thing that, that helps us um, really good granular accurate data really helps us get those deals on board um, 
and it's probably also worth mentioning that we do have small lines in directors and officers for example we're looking to um, launch in the digital asset arena too so we're looking for partners in those those areas also uh, it's not just professional indemnity excellent uh, before I move on to mortgage and credit, I'm just going to check with my underwriters. There is Patrick's on, Lee's on. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay. Great. Okay. So mortgage and credit. This is the the last of our uh, the last of our lines. Um, again, very nichey, slightly unusual. Certainly on the mortgage side, we bought a company called Genworth a few years back, uh, which gave us um, uh, quite a lot of market share in this particular area. Uh, we write a lot of the mortgage business in uh, in Italy, um, and uh, and uh, to, a, to a smaller extent in the UK, but looking to definitely looking to expand that and into Europe as well. Uh, it's uh, you know very specialist underwriting, and it, uh, headed up by uh, really two guys from uh, from the insurance side, which is Sagata uh, uh, um, Basu uh, and Lee Thompson. Uh, Lee, I believe, is on the call, uh, and uh, Pad Bamford, um, more from a sales perspective, and I'll hand over to Lee first, I think. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lee Thompson, Senior Underwriter in the Mortgage and Credit Team. I'll talk you through um, a quick overview of our mortgage and credit product. On the mortgage side, we have it split into uh, two main solutions. We have the Flow MI, which is a cover taken out by the bank or building society, the provider of the, the mortgage, uh, in which we cover any negative equity in case of a default by the end customer. So here the beneficiary is uh, the bank and the coverage is provided loan by loan. So as each individual loan comes on risk, we pro provide some, some level of, of, of cover and risk of default. If the there is a, a default on that loan and then there's the negative equity, that's the amount that uh, effectively we're protecting against. The second solution we have on the mortgage side is a structured credit solution. This is uh, given on a portfolio of existing loans. So this is more of a large collection of existing loans. They will be uh, varying ages and levels of am amortization, but here we'll provide us a, a similar, uh, similar kind of uh, cover to, to that. However, uh, these can be structured a little bit more differently with either a focus on risk transfer or capital efficiency for, for that lender. On the protection side, uh, we have quite a lot of business in the UK. This is um, your more traditional income protection, PPI, mortgage payment protection kind of products for the end consumer. Uh, for income protection, the policyholder would select a uh, fixed monthly benefit and then they will be protected for accident, sickness, and unemployment type covers. And in the event that they're unable to work, the policy would then pay 12 to 24 months of, of that benefit, depending on what type of uh, cover th that they chose. The protection subline is, is one where we see uh, significant growth potential uh, right now, both in the UK and internationally. We were one of the first markets to open up to new business following uh, the pandemic. Uh, and even during that time, we took on some uh, large renewal rights portfolios. So we are really looking to grow there, um, both into our existing known products with the, and also some new products with uh, similar offerings to, to what we do, things like bill protector, cash plans, child plans. Um, again, very similar, it's that replacement of loss of income through not being able to work. But also outside of, of, of those type of products, um, in those same kind of risks. So those accident, sickness and unemployment risks where we're looking to provide more, more general accident and sickness covers on both a, an individual and on a group basis where it's not necessarily a, a monthly benefit type of stuff, but more lump sum. Good stuff. Pad, anything to add? Um, very briefly, thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, Lee. Just to add that the, as Bruce said, the mortgage indemnity was uh, product which Gemworth um, underwrote and underwrote for over 20 years and most of the team came over with the Amtrust um, acquisition back in 2016 I think it was it's probably the most experienced team in this niche area across Europe 
Um, the team have been underwriting this business through a number of cycles, which includes the 90s and the global financial crisis. So pretty embedded into um, what really goes on in the uh, mortgage world. We are very active with the trade bodies and most of our business is direct, which is with, through building societies and some of the smaller banks. And we have got large bank relationships, as Bruce said earlier, in Italy. Um, and we're looking to grow that business across the across the continent and the UK. And just to touch on uh, what Lee was saying about the creditor, that business is obtained through third party cover holders, who again, we delegate um, the fulfillment and the claims uh, handling to those to those organizations. Um, we're looking for uh, book transfers in that market and also entering new business um, through either mortgage type intermediaries or or other opportunities that we see. We gained a great lot of experience in the data uh, that we acquired over the last couple of years, especially through those transfers. So um, uh, we're, 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 ready, we're ready to grow that business. Good, thanks, Pat. Okay. Uh, thanks, Thank you. So that's our, our six core lines of business. Um, final couple of slides, why work with us? Look, a lot, a lot of these things we've kind of touched on as we've gone through. You know, we, we, we have very specialist market knowledge in our chosen niches. We know what we like. Uh, we keep fairly fairly tight to that. Um, but we're in growth mode, as I said at the beginning, and very interested in opportunities within those niches, but also, uh, you know, unusual niches that might fit some of the key characteristics that we've been sort of bringing out, the kind of counter-cyclical, um, uh, the unusual areas where we're, where we're where we can take a fairly significant market position, uh, avoiding going head to head with the very large insurers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, entrepreneurial can do underwriting culture. I think Andy, Andy touched on that. Uh, you know, we, we, we employ people who know their areas. We empower them. Uh, we don't impose uh, very long chains of, uh, of, of sign off on them. Uh, decisions are made quickly. Uh, we absolutely pride ourselves on our ability to say yes or no very fast, and we'll say no very fast, and and yes might take a little bit longer, but but you know getting 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 being quick and honest with you, uh, and not messing you around is is absolutely what we do. You know, as I said, our business model is is working with delegated uh, arrangements. We 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 know what you like and what you don't like, and 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 uh, and, and and you know we we pride ourselves on doing that uh, doing that the right way. Um, financially robust, uh, you know, A minus A and best rating, uh, absolutely in it for the long term. You know, we 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 we, we have uh, we we went we've gone from having a very large number of um, relationships, uh, many of them very small, uh, and over the years, over the last two or three years, we've really honed that down. So we've got a much uh, tighter book of business. Um, means that we've. We can focus more on on individual MGAs and uh, and not be too stretched and not having time to speak to the people who who, who bring us the business and, and who move the needle. So you know, longevity of relationship is key for us. Uh, for all for all companies, the the transactional cost, the frictional cost of doing business now with the the hoops we have to jump through to get. To get business on the books is 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 so so, so relevant that um, you know we want to be able to do a deal and stay on that deal and you know work it for many many years. Uh, international presence, um, as I said, you know really we can go anywhere and um, and we're not restricted by certainly by our appetite um, and we have the ability to get licenses in in countries where we're not uh, not not currently operating. Uh, and then you know technology and uh, and innovation and uh, and uh, really a, a significant focus on on data increasingly. So the final final slide checklist for effective partnerships. Um, you know we 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 are very focused on getting really good quality uh, data, experience data, and using that effectively to uh, to, to to be. Uh, uh, present excellence in our in our risk selection. Um, we've got strong presence in niche markets. I think hopefully that's that's come across during the um, 
during the presentation, uh, alignment of interest for an effective partnership. Uh, we we want to work with companies that understand the regulatory environment. It is changing. It is difficult. Um, we, we've got we've got very strong um, conduct and compliance teams within our organisation, uh, and we can help MGAs. Uh, but we we want to be able to work with MGAs that kind of get it and um, and know what needs to be done, albeit they might not have all the resources to do it. Uh, and then um, you know inevitably strong focus on 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 customer outcomes. I said that was my last slide, but I have a feeling there's one more, which is contact details. Uh, Julia, I presume that these um, slides get uh, uh, get distributed and made available to everyone. So. Uh, feel, you know, message out to to everyone on the call. Feel free to pick up the phone, speak to me. Um, check out our our LinkedIn pages. Um, uh, I can make put you in direct contact with the the underwriters on this call or or other underwriters as appropriate. And the final thing uh, for housekeeping is to remind you of the CPD. Um, those two points. The 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 first one was that was to get an understanding of Amtrust as an organization, its capabilities, its uh, risk appetite, etc. And the second one was to know who to contact and how to get hold of us. Thank you, Bruce. Excellent. Thank you so much. And um, it was very well uh, coordinated with your underwriters um, joining as we went along. I wouldn't have necessarily recommended we do it that way, but it seemed to work perfectly well. So thank you for that. Um, so at the moment, we have no questions, which is a surprise, mm. and it does make one wonder whether you just thoroughly covered off every possible <laughs> thing someone could wonder about Amtrust. But, um, yeah, just uh, if there are anybody on, if there is anybody on the call who either wants to reveal themselves and un, um, unmute themselves or drop a question in chat. So does anyone have any questions for Bruce or the team? That would suggest Bruce and the team, you've done a remarkable job. Perfect. So um, I think you did touch upon this, and I'll ask a question. This could well be how long is a piece of string. Um, mm. But if you have a successful conversation with a an MGA, a, a potential uh, cover holder, and um, it looks like you are going to go into partnership with them, what does your onboarding process look like in terms of time frames? And I do realise that is a, is a bit of a how no, long it is, string, yeah. it, it's it's a how long is a piece of string and how is that how how much shorter is that string becoming? Okay. Um, and uh, so, look, it's it's one that the whole industry struggles with. I think the uh, the whole due diligence process and the the hoops that we really need to, we need to be um, jumping through. Um, I think it's been fairly painful. I think most companies go on that same sort of trajectory of uh, having to go way, way over the top and then kind of uh, eke their way back a little bit over time. And um, I think certainly we've been in that position. And um, uh, but over the last, certainly over the last six six months plus, we've we've really honed our onboarding process down and made that due diligence. As, as as slick as it can be um but you know the regulatory environment that we operate in is such that we 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 have to have uh, and particularly in this in this area where we delegate uh, our regulator expects us to know everything about who who's in who we're delegating to and then who's in the longer chain you know the the, the, the regulators don't really like this business model hugely <laughs> the longer the chain the the more they dislike it yeah uh, and and the expectation on the insurer is to know what's happening all the way down to through the delegation and into the sub delegation and, and beyond. Yeah. So you know it's 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 something that we're we're kind of on. A, I think the whole industry is on a bit of a learning curve of how to do that and how to do it effectively and quickly and efficiently. Um, and um, certainly we 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 are significantly better at it. And I think uh, I think um, MGA partners would find us uh, you know. A, 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 a pleasant change from from certainly where we were and probably where some of the market still is. Thank you for that. Um, I haven't got another question from delegates, but I've got another question myself. Um, it, it's still kind of on the, if you like, the onboarding uh, pace. Um, 
you said you'd honed your onboarding process, but have you changed your onboarding process over kind of perhaps the last six months to a year with regard to your need, if there is a need to understand kind of a, a DEI culture within a business or indeed kind of ESG and data that surrounds both of those, I don't want to say topics, but both of those areas? Uh. It, it's something that we're working on at the moment. Okay. So the easy answer is to say no. We haven't yeah. changed on on DNI. Um, a huge amount of focus on uh, or on ESG. A huge amount of focus on on conduct MI, um, and uh, you know, in line with the value measures and GIPP and consumer duty coming along. So we're we're extremely slick in that area, okay. um, and our ability to uh, to ingest um, huge amounts of conduct information from uh, from our MGA cover holder partners, and uh, and you know tick all our regulatory boxes from a from a reporting perspective uh, are, are very much there. But but the but the but the importance of can't be understated of getting that data you know cleanly on time um, and, and you know value measures reporting is a is a is a tricky one. We have to hit our deadline of I can't remember end of Feb for the the finance the six months up to December. You know when when you're delegating and sub delegating potentially that that creates issues getting data up through the chain quickly and into us so that we can then report it. You know these are all challenges that myself and other insurers are uh, are wrestling with. I've got um, I've got Kishan on the line who is our head of conduct. Um, uh, Kish, is there anything I, I should have said or didn't say or shouldn't have said? <laughs> More important. <laughs> no, no, I think you've covered everything off um, quite extensively. So, yeah, we, we've streamlined our processes um, and we continue to do so to really capture the key information. Um, the really important thing that we do is we set out what we need at the outset. So it's not a case of you come back to us with all the information and then all of a sudden there's the next set of hurdles to to jump over we will set that out early doors um and we're very much about working with partners to um to progress in that matter so for example if there are items that a partner may struggle to achieve we're more than happy to assist in showing them what needs to be done um, and helping them get that deal across the line so we're very much focused on helping um the the outside sort of broker world mgaa world it's it's a very important thing for us um but at the same time we're very very conscious of abiding by the regulations so we make sure that we balance that scale quite effectively thanks kishan thank you bruce um i've got a question from a delegate which actually really dove dovetails nicely with a question that i was going to also put to you um so my question actually is when you're engaging with prospective partners um what what's the what's the kind of state if you like of the the access to data that those potential partners have do you do you see that there's a lot of work still to be t done perhaps with them um, within mga businesses that whether they've got the data they're just not um they don't have the systems to access it or whether they they are not gathering enough granular data that would suffice to to engage with you as a partner so that's that was my question but the question from the delegate was um what technology are you using or considering implementing in order to deal with receiving more data from mgas okay so um we're in the process of launching uh, uh, a new insurance um, platform uh and we're due to go live with uh, warranty 1st of July. Um, uh, it's built predominantly around a data warehouse. And so we're, we've, we, we, we're incredibly focused on making sure that we have, uh, you know, a very clear picture of the minimum number of fields uh, that we need, uh, what our data set needs to look like for different products, different sub products. And, um, uh, and so we can be incredibly clear up front. We have a minute, what we call an MDT, a minimum data template, uh, which would be embedded in our binders, which says, this is the data you need to provide. 
uh, this often in this format with these with these minimum data fields. And some of those fields are mandatory, some of them are optional. We set out that we set them all out very clearly. That comes into our systems, allows us to um, create our data warehouse and run all our reporting off uh, reporting for our own benefit for regulators and, and back to the MGAs. Um, so, so it's it's an area that we have uh, we're moving very quickly on, and uh, we're coming right to the end of that process of uh, of getting ourselves in a in a uh, you know getting getting much better focus around the quality of our data and uh, the consistency of it more than anything. Does that does that answer the question? I think it, yeah, I think it does. Um, I think whether it's a question of receiving more data from MGAs. Um, which I guess was the question from the delegate, as opposed to this is kind of this sounds like a bit of a rollout project that you know you're looking at data in one particular product area first, with a view for to rolling it out to yeah we're roll, rolling out rolling out pretty quickly, but okay. um, but yes we 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 will be uh, as a as an insurer we we will be demanding of data we're going to ask for a lot of data and it's going to someone's going to seem damn crazy. But it's how we run our business. It's how we make sure that we've got, um, you know, uh, we're able to price effectively and efficiently. It it ensures that we uh, you know, we can meet our regulatory obligations, uh, which keep, keeps the MGAs um, on the right side of the law as well. And and those uh, those data requirements, you know, as we've seen over the over recent years, go up and up. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and you know it's it's the, the 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 nature of what we do now that and the and the increasing regulatory focus that particularly on conduct MI um, that 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 the the amount of data we need increases. Thanks, Bruce. Um, I don't have any more questions in the. Oh, thank you. I've got another question. So this is actually from the same delegate. Um, who asked about the um, technology. So getting data into your data warehouse is absolutely important, but having clean data is even more important. Do you have tech solutions in mind to get uh, to get clean data in there? So, so the data is going to come through to us through effectively through Bordero, whether that's you know sent in or dropped into FTP sites, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we have a middleware which effectively cleanses the data uh, and checks for errors and that kind of thing. Um, so the data going into our system it has to be clean, and if it isn't, then it doesn't go into the system. Uh, the whole purpose of this, like you know, what we're doing, like all insurers, is to to ensure that we have the ability to run really accurate reports. Um, so that mapping process, that that middleware that's done uh, to map fields correctly. And to make sure that you know, in the case of warranty, that if if someone's uh, completed a a sales record and they've spelt the, the the vehicle manufacturer wrong and they've said it's not Mercedes but it's you know got the wrong spelling in it, that that gets picked up and cleansed so that we can then be in our data warehouse holding data, running reports against uh, against the manufacturer type and having you know the 40 or 50 manufacturer. Uh, automotive manufacturers rather than sort of 400 because there's lots of variations on the spelling. Thanks Bruce. Um, so once again um, just a last call to delegates if you have any further questions do drop them into the chat box um, we've still got a few more minutes. Um, while we're giving our delegates a chance to just think about whether there are any final questions, um, I just wanted to say thank you very much to you, Bruce, and to the, the team. It, it was, um, as I say, probably not necessarily how I would have expected um, additional presenters, but it, it worked very well. So thank you Good. for that. Your apologies, um, cast of thousands. It could cost of thousands indeed, but no, it worked really well. Um, and uh, thank you to our delegates. I haven't got any further questions. So I am going to wind up by saying um, thank you to everyone for your time, both to Amtrust and to our MGAA members. Um, there will be a, a survey going out post event, so I would urge you to complete that if um, you kindly could find a couple of minutes to do so. Um, as we said at the top of the meeting, this recording will be posted on our YouTube channel and on the MGAA website and the slide deck will be issued post events or registrants so um, that will be forthcoming in due course but thanks once again to everyone for joining us um, 
And if you have any questions, do feel free to drop them through to Bruce. Details on the slide deck or to the MGAA would be delighted to answer them. Um, other than that, everyone do have a great afternoon and we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.